this Tuesday, 28 February, last day of February, year of our Lord, 2023, and we're about to begin. I'm a little early. Uh, we're about to begin uh, a new lecture in personal finance. Today we're going to talk about bargaining and negotiating. And I am in a new place, so I'm starting early to test the technology. So welcome if you happen to be out there joining the um, we're about to start the zoom call I'm curious about the audio quality and really what I'm really checking testing is the uh, the stream I'm using Starlink I am at my home away from home at Stephen F Austin State Park where my beautiful bride is the park host and I'm here to help I get to fix stuff and cut grass it's a really cool volunteer gig, um, but it lets us live here in the park, and we just got a relatively new open range fifth wheel RV, and so I set up a new office, and this is the first time I've tested, well, the first time I've tried to do a, a class lecture uh, in this space, fingers crossed. So hopefully if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, we're live streaming. If you'll leave a comment, just let me know you can he how you, you know, what the quality is. Hopefully there's no buffering. Hopefully I'm not freezing up. Hopefully the audio is good. So that's what I'm hoping to hear. So I'm about to go now start the Zoom meeting. Let me get that opened. Uh, Zoom. I've got a new setup today, so I've got uh, I've got to get everything working. I gotta switch accounts in my Zoom. See if I remember my password. So now I am home meetings personal finance we're getting started oh so now I have to change some preferences here hold on video should have a ecamm virtual cam that's working okay audio let's make sure that's testing testing okay that seems to work so now I'm going to go ahead and let everybody come into the zoom room so welcome 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 to the zoom room uh, to welcome aboard good to see everybody hope you had a great week as usual if you will please let me know you can hear me I would appreciate that I am I am using a totally new setup today that I'm not sure how it's all working. So let's see if I can get this thing back. Okay, can you guys hear me? Every time I move my mouse, I'm disappearing my... Crazy. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to open up chat. Can hear you. Thank you, Christian. All right. Uh, so we did the uh, last week, we did uh, credit crush. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. You guys did a great job on Credit Crush. You get it. Um, and I hope that you learned. I uh, hope you learned the big idea in this, in that lesson and that assignment, was to basically see how much it costs to have debt, and especially when you're paying minimums, and you're paying less than the interest on the credit card. Credit card interest is higher than it's ever been, uh, and they say higher than it's ever been in my lifetime. Uh, 
25% I think is the average credit card interest rate at the moment. Interest rates have gone up a lot, certainly the highest they've ever been in your lifetime. I was around uh, back in the 70s, so I'm, but credit cards and credit card interest wasn't so crazy high back then as it is now. So hopefully the credit crush assignment gave you a really good illustration of the cost of that product that we call credit. Um, credit, some people feel like it's a, it's a privilege or a, it's an entitlement, but it's really just a product and it's an expensive product. So hopefully you're able to see uh, the benefits of paying off those credit cards and any debt that you have, paying it off as soon as possible. And you got some debt payment strategies that were uh, pretty powerful based on your assignments. They looked pretty, it looked like, it looks like you did a great job. I still have a lot in the queue, a lot of assignments I have not yet graded, but I'll get to those today. So this week, we're going to talk about bargaining and negotiating, and it's still a couple of minutes early, so I'm not going to get started yet. If you would, uh, go ahead and chat in your that you're here and the time that you got here so that I have that on record in the Zoom meeting. Uh, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, welcome. Uh, feel free to leave a comment tell me you're watching if you're not watching live uh, tell me you know just let me know you're watching sometime and I'll get the comment that you leave whether you're on Facebook or YouTube uh, I'll get the uh, I'll get your comment and I'll get to see that you're here whether you're here now or at 2 in the morning this is an asynchronous course and so that's how that works all right, it is 10.04. Any questions, those of you who are here in the Zoom room, I would love to answer any questions you have. We can start off with questions, and then we'll jump right into today's assignment, which is assignment number seven, bargaining and negotiating. While I'm waiting for you to post your questions, if someone could please go into Blackboard and just confirm for me that the assignment is posted and available and uh, ready for you to work on waiting, hoping, looking. Just jump into Blackboard. Let me know that uh, you can access assignment number seven, bargaining and negotiating. Looking for a comment, looking for some, what was the most assignment seven is posted. Uh, assignment is posted. Don't see anything about class collaboration though. That's great. So I am going to update the class collaboration and for those of you who are here in the Zoom meeting, this is where you, you're required to gather the content that is discussed in the Zoom meeting. A lot of students aren't even watching these Zoom meetings and they're asking me questions that um, shouldn't be asked because it's been covered. So thank you for being here. Here's the class collaboration. Uh, you'll notice that we have, I linked, uh, See if I can find it. So class collaboration is I want you to discuss, comment, just and I posted a link in today's uh, today's post. Uh, I posted a link to another article and I'll post this also in Blackboard. But the difference between bargaining and negotiating. So just as you learn this week, uh, your assignment's going to be learning about bar. Your class collaboration this week is going to be to give me a comment. Tell me your perspective about the difference between bargaining and negotiating. So I posted an article. This is not yet in Money Study Group, but after we finish today's lesson, I will post it in Money Study Group, and I'll also post in Blackboard the class coll collaboration. So I, I'm going to get to the assignment here in a minute, but I want to make a quick announcement. I am in a new place. Uh, we're, I'm at my home away from home at the Stephen F. Austin State Park. My wife is a park host, and I'm here to help her. It's a volunteer gig. It's a lot of fun. It gives us the ability to live in this 
RV that I'm sitting in now. And so I created a little office space in our open range RV. And I'm using Starlink today from the, uh, from the camper. So it's, I'm getting a little notice that we have an unstable connection, which is pretty normal with Starlink. It comes and goes. I did a speed test earlier and it was really good, but you know, as the satellite moves, sometimes it, I may be freezing up. Um, so if this doesn't work, I'll be very disappointed. I'm hoping that it works, but if, if you lose me, if you lose me, then just go to your YouTube playlist and I will post the video from last semester on this topic so that you can uh, do what you need to do. But the assignment in Blackboard is really where it's at. There's not a whole lot other than what I'm going to talk about in this lecture. Uh, there's really nothing you're going to miss if you're if you lose me. So let's see if I can. I just admitted Orlando. Welcome Orlando. So I'm a, can you guys just leave a comment uh, help me out here and tell me what is is there any are you noticing any technology glitches at this point uh, I'm seeing folks come and join a little bit late and I'm letting you in uh, Giselle are you speaking no I see you but I don't hear you uh, Giselle okay no any uh, uh, let's see no technology issues no glitches cool cool so there was one question what was the most amount of credit card debt you have had uh, are you talking about well so just to be clear your assignment was to use about ten thousand dollars in credit card uh, debt for the purpose of the uh, assignment credit crush um, so that's about what I'm seeing but I'm assuming that you're asking me in terms of real life how much, uh, what's the amount of credit card debt that I've seen people carry? Uh, I'm not sure, uh, Orlando, if that's what you were asking. Uh, yes, real life. Okay, so I'll tell you a little story real quick before we get started. Um, it, it wasn't credit card debt, but when I first started teaching this course at the University of Houston, personal finance, at the end of the first day in class, uh, I had a student come up to me. I'm not going to tell you his name. He, he was pretty popular. He was a really cool guy, uh, and I liked him. I mean, I like everybody, but he was, you know, really kind of a Mr. Personality, I guess you could say. Um, but he had come to me at the end of class and said, Professor Munchback, I was wondering if I could talk to you, just you and me, for a few minutes. I'm like, sure. Uh, I was, you know, happy to visit with him and clearly he was looking for some life coaching uh, counseling and he just needed to share his situation with someone and I was the person that happened to be seemed to be appropriate I mean his issues the challenges he was facing as he was in year number five he was going to graduate so it was a I believe it was a fall course it may have been spring I'm not sure no, it would have been spring because the first time I taught this, it was spring. So the same semester you're in, this was when I met this student, and he was going to be graduating in May, but he had five years of college because he um, started out pretty distracted, changed his major a couple of times, a couple of times. And so here was his issue. It wasn't credit card debt, it was student loans. And he had $125,000 in student loans. Now, Orlando, this was the first student that I really engaged with in this course. And so I was uh, shocked to hear his story. And of course, not knowing everyone else's story, I didn't know if his story was kind of normal or if he was kind of an anomaly. Turns out he was uh, like the epic story of over leveraging his financial life to get a college degree. And so uh, that set me up to be aware of and kind of concerned about the level of debt that some students 
and just some people uh, put into their life. So if he were a client of mine, I would be, or if probably his parents who were co-signers on his loans, my advice would be, let's get that debt under control. Let's get it taken care of and let's uh, start out. If and So this helped me, his story helped me be kind of a financial life coach with families who who had students who were going to be going to college you know my perspective my perspective is if you're a parent and you're trying to help your student your your child prepare for college you know I I really am a big proponent in having them go to work do some jobs before they go to college so that they understand the value of money because clearly this student didn't really understand and I've had this happen in my own life with my own kids and with lots of clients where a student goes to college without any appreciation for what it costs and they don't realize how much you know their lack of focus lack of discipline lack of diligence ends up costing their parents so anyway that's that's not credit card debt I've had lots of clients with lots of credit card debt <clears throat> but mostly uh, the kind of debt that gets really big isn't so much credit cards as it is student loans and business loans. So many people I've worked with in the past have had big dreams for their business and they just believe that their business would succeed no matter what and they would do whatever it took to make their business successful and because there are plenty of uh, creditors who are available to provide you money in exchange for interest payments the you know the businesses go into debt people who own businesses take on a lot of debt and so not sure that answers your question but those those are the kind of the big I the big things I've seen in real life with debt um, okay any other questions thanks Orlando I appreciate that question uh, righty well let's get started if you have a question as we go feel free to pop it in there so the difference between bargaining and negotiating that's going to be your class collaboration tell me what do you think is the difference between bargaining and negotiating there's I, I was doing a little research this morning just googled bar, bargaining and negotiating just to see if there's anything new out there on the internet and I found an article on LinkedIn and it was the difference between bargaining and negotiating so I just kind of copied and pasted it there's a link to that article um, but the what we're really going to talk about is bargaining and negotiating but your class collaboration is just going to be to as you learn a little bit about bargaining and negotiating this week I want you to tell me what do you think the di distinctions are between the two let me know that you understand some of the distinctions but uh, we're going to talk about bargaining and negotiating for the next few minutes and your assignment this week is going to be to do a little research in fact let me just show you if I can yeah this is the article this is what you're going to see in blackboard basically and so the assignment is going to include this video from my friend Ramit Sethi he and another fellow I can't remember I think his name is Todd um, they do uh, so uh, anyway that was that was where I met Ramit he was a speaker and so he does this video and it's pretty cool and it has a lot of interesting uh, tidbits about negotiating for a salary and so I just thought it would be a good thing for you guys to uh, learn and so that's part of your homework assignment is to watch that video and just summarize it the best you can and then I want you to just answer these questions as usual that are posted in your uh, in your blackboard assignment um, and these are I think these are some seven principles that I've accumulated over the years that I'm just going to try to highlight a little bit today in this lecture um, but I really want you to think about your own experience with bargaining and negotiating. So there's a video there, and this is, like I said, basically your assignment for this week. Um, 
bargaining and negotiating. So you'll see that it's already in Blackboard. It's been confirmed. Thank you very much for confirming that the assignment is in Blackboard. I am going to take a sip of water. If you could see my office, <clears throat> you'd see it's a very small office. And there's a very limited space, but it's been being used very efficiently. I'm pretty excited about my new space. Uh, didn't know quite how we were going to do this um, in this home away from home. But so far it's working and I'm doing something new. This glass of water is actually sitting in a drawer because there's just not enough room on the small desk to put the glass of water. And there's a microphone right here that's uh, anyway that's kind of fun so let's get started I want to ask you a question about bargaining negotiating so in my experience what I found in talking to students and just people and just doing regular life what I've found is that there are really two groups of people when it comes to bargaining and negotiating on the one hand there are folks like Dave Ramsey have been for years I taught Dave Ramsey's content uh, at churches as excuse me as well as in this course uh, for the first many years we used Dave Ramsey's content and Dave Ramsey uh, teaches uh, a lesson on bargaining and negotiating and since I was teaching his content I got to learn it and hear Dave on a regular basis <clears throat> I've been to Dave's office and met his team and it's an amazing outfit, uh, very cool. Someday I'll tell you the story about Dave Ramsey and why I think he's a, he's done a lot of really good things. Uh, mostly he's helped a lot of people get out of debt. Um, but when you talk to Dave about, he covers a lot of topics, but one of his topics is bargaining and negotiating. And if you've ever watched Dave Ramsey talk about bargaining and negotiating, he gets really excited and he's really, he loves to bargain and negotiate. So it was, a, it was my favorite lesson from Dave just because of his level of excitement about it. So you've got folks like Dave Ramsey and I'm a lot like Dave Ramsey. I, I not only do not fear bargaining and negotiating, I'm not afraid to ask um, and I don't even feel awkward in you know any kind of bargaining or negotiating situation. So that's me, but my wife, on the other hand, isn't, she does not like it, she does not enjoy it, uh, she pretty much avoids it. So my question to you is, if if we were together, you, you know, when I started teaching this course, we were all together in the same room, and what I would do is I'd draw a line down the middle of the class, and I'd say, let's pretend we have two sides of the room. On this side, on my right side, your left side of the room, we have folks like me who love to bargain and negotiate. Folks like Dave Ramsey. Just no problem we recognize that it's something that is important and necessary and can save us money and help us make more money and help really put us in a position of a greater probability of success if we learn how to bargain and negotiate and we are not afraid of it we actually like it some of us even love it so that's this side of the room but on the other side of the room, we have folks like my wife, Connie, and some of you who feel very differently about bargaining and negotiating. And so those of you who would be on this side of the room, the left side of the room, your right side of the room, my left side of the room, for those of you who feel like bargaining and negotiating is it's awkward, it's not fun, it's uncomfortable, you don't really like doing it. I just want you to raise your hand and tell me which side of the room you're on. So if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, that's going to be part of your class collaboration as well. Not just to give me the distinction between bargaining and negotiating. That's a, just your perspective about the distinctions or differences between bargaining and negotiating. That's one thing I want from your class collaboration. But the main thing I'm going to be looking for is which side of the room would you be on? Would you be on the side that I'm on where bargaining and negotiating is actually a fun part of life? Something that I 
you know, we do, we know that it, it works, it's important, and if you don't do it, you're basically going to pay more money, make less money, and have less success in your life. That's what I know is true about bargaining and negotiating and the skills that go along with it. So right now I just want to know, I want you to think about and answer the question, which side of the room are you on? How do you feel about bargaining and negotiating? So give me some comments there. Uh, if I can get my mouse to communicate with me. So I'm looking, if you're on in the Zoom meeting, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Vivian. A little uncomfortable. That's good. A little uncomfortable is good. It's better than a lot uncomfortable, I guess. You can tell I do have a preference. I do have a bias. I do believe that, you know, my side of the room has some advantage. So we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about that today for a little bit to try to help you uh, feel less uncomfortable and feel more comfortable with a few basic skills for bargaining and negotiating that can help you improve your chances of success in life financially so uh, depends on where you're at Maritza thank you that's good I really like bargaining says Giselle I love a little debate <laughs> yeah and that's part of it a little debate Kayla you're uncomfortable okay I raised your hand I appreciate that thank you okay cool Anyone else, if you haven't done so, listen, you're going to need to do that in your assignment. That's going to be your class collaboration part of it. Uh, not sure when to negotiate and feel weird about it. Thanks, Orlando. That's good. Um, so, okay. Now that you've thought about which side of the room you're on, and if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, put in the comment, grab the screenshot, include it in your assignment and that will be part of your class collaboration. Uh, in addition to giving me a little bit of distinction, the differences between what is bargaining, what is negotiating. So I'm not going to really talk about the differences between bargaining and negotiating, but what I am going to talk about is the difference between the folks on the right side, my right side of the room, those folks who love to bargain and negotiate, who recognize that most things are negotiable, that a lot of things are negotiable, that bargaining and negotiating involves a whole lot of things in your life that the folks on the other side of the room, because you're not comfortable with bargaining and negotiating, because you don't really like it, you see fewer and fewer and fewer things that you think would be appropriate to attempt to bargain or negotiate. So just trust me that on each side of the room there's a different perspective, a different uh, view of bargaining and negotiating that actually because of what we believe on each side of the room uh, creates a different experience in life in terms of what we negotiate not only how we negotiate and how we bargain but the things that we even attempt to negotiate so we'll talk about that for a minute but first before we talk about the different things that are negotiable the things that you can bargain for versus the things that you really can't bargain for uh, before we talk about those things and make that list I want to ask you to think about just just right now as we're talking about bargaining and negotiating and the distinction between the people who do and the people who don't I want you to think about a number like let's pretend that all of us make a hundred thousand dollars a year and we're all buying investing purchasing the same items like we all have rent or a house but everything's e even. Let's say we all have a job, we all have a car, we all have insurance, we all have internet, we all have an iPhone. Everything's, everything you have and everything I have is pretty much the same. The difference is we all make a hundred thousand dollars a year and we're all spending a certain amount on each of the things that we have and we all have the same basket of things. 
That's what I want you to pretend for a minute and then answer this question. With a $100,000 income and we're all invest buying the same things, how much difference in terms of a percentage, in terms of a dollar amount from that $100,000, what do you think the difference is of advantage for the people on the right side of the room versus the people on the left side of the room? So I know that's just a, you know, just use your imagination and give me an answer. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, I want that answer too. What do you think the percentages or the dollar amount on a $100,000 income, $100,000, maybe it's a $100,000 budget. So we have, we make $100,000, we all have the same budget, um, but we all have different numbers in those categories. But the budget includes the same categories, the same items, the same expenses, but obviously if I negotiate a better deal on my whatever it is if I get a better deal on whatever it is and I do that over and over and over how much difference do you think it might make give me a dollar amount or a percentage how much of an advantage will I have in terms of money versus my wife who will not negotiate or bargain on anything. She just takes whatever the price is, whether it's a used car or a lease agreement or an iPhone or internet services or whatever. 10% says Orlando, 20% says Vivian. So in other words, Vivian, if you say 20%, that means $20,000 a year basically is how much difference a person who bargains or negotiates can make in terms of the expenses, they're, the $100,000 that they're spending. And Orlando, you say it's about hundred grand. So I don't know, there's no right answer, obviously, but those are two good guesses, I think. Anyone else? What do you think? Again, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, give me your number. It's either a dollar amount or a percentage. I just want you to think about the reality that there's a difference in terms of advantage for people who decide they're going to learn how to bargain and how to negotiate versus people who just say uh, I'm not gonna bargain. I don't like it it's uncomfortable it's awkward I'm not I'm not really going to try to bargain or negotiate for really anything including a used car a salary a job a promotion you know, whatever it is, there's just a difference in terms of outcomes, in terms of results for people who know the basic skills of bargaining and negotiating. And my question is, how much difference does it make? And it's obviously just a guess, but I'm just curious, what do you think? I want you to put a number to it. I want you to think about how much is it worth to you, not just in one year, not just in one transaction, but if you decide moving forward that you're going to approach uh, your financial transactions with the idea that there are a lot of things that you can bargain for and negotiate a better deal. And over your lifetime, it's going to make a difference. So if it's 10% on $100,000, that's $100,000. 10% is 10% is $10,000 on a $100,000 budget. And if you're if you're an advantaged person and you're and you're basically saving or earning more whatever it is that you bargained or negotiated, you're 10% ahead of the people who didn't bother to bargain and negotiate. That's 10 grand in 1 year, in 10 years that's 100 grand. And so that's, that's a lot of money. And if you invested it, and you invested it wisely, and it grew, that would turn into a lot more money. So um, I would think salary negotiations could make the biggest difference. Vivian, yeah, it could, but I've hired a lot of people, and very few were very good at bargaining and negotiating in terms of their job position, their salary, uh, and so yeah, it that's probably one that can make the biggest difference, and that's why your assignment is going to include this uh, this interview with Ramit Sethi because he's going to teach you 
some basic things that you can do you know when you get into that next interview to sell yourself or to bargain for a better deal or just to win the job because of your ability to negotiate the deal so yeah that's that's for sure uh, anyone else give me a number I only have two numbers for my folks in zoom which tells me either you're watching Netflix or you're afraid to answer or something else so what do you think maybe it could be that I just didn't ask the question in a very clear way that's a problem when you don't ask a question in a clear enough way to get an answer so let me try again uh, Kayla agrees with 10% thank you Kayla 10% uh, seems like a good number I think so I'm going to while you're thinking about uh, that number I'm going to tell you a little story because um, I like telling stories it it's more fun than statistics I think stories and statistics are different but my story is uh, when I started teaching this this course one of the things that you know I had to do was I wanted to have integrity like I wanted to do the things that I was teaching you to do and so when we, when we got to this particular lecture this particular assignment bargaining and negotiating uh, that same week it was Sunday and my sister-in-law had bought some furniture and she sent us a picture of it and they were pretty excited about it and they got a good price and so that they told us where they got the furniture it was Ashley furniture well at that time I'd been looking for furniture just kind of waiting doing a little shopping but I really wanted to replace the furniture in our living room because it was terrible I hated it, it was the worst living room furniture I ever owned we got it at an estate sale and we probably got robbed it was cheap inexpensive and cheap basically it was junk and since I bought it you know we didn't want to just get rid of it because it was cheap and junk and it was a big mistake and admitting that that was a mistake was kind of hard for me so I just lived with it but I hated it I wanted to replace it and I knew what I wanted I wanted leather furniture with electric uh, recliners and I wanted two big couches to match because our living room is such that instead of a couch and a love seat do you know you can buy a couch for like 50 bucks more than a love seat and you get a whole lot more um, you know furniture <laughs> so anyway I wanted two couches one love seat and I wanted them to match and I wanted leather and so that's what I wanted so when my sister-in-law bought this furniture I thought let's 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 go check out Ashley so we, my wife and I got on my Goldwing motorcycle I'll never forget she doesn't get on my Goldwing motorcycle very often but it was a nice night it was Sunday evening we get on our on my Goldwing motorcycle and we drive to Ashley furniture on I-45 in Webster Texas up by the Baybrook Mall kinda sorta and we go inside and they have exactly what I'm looking for beautiful leather furniture and it was I wanted it so bad because it was exactly what I'd hoped for I sat on it laid on it bounced on it pushed the buttons played with it and I said that's it that's what I want so I told the salesman we'll take it now think about that for a second the story so far doesn't involve what <laughs> I'm like acting like the people on the left side of the room like my wife because you know what I could afford the furniture I didn't really didn't you know I just I wanted it they were gonna deliver it the next day the cost of the furniture was over five thousand dollars but you know what I was like it's worth it it's a good it's a great good quality it's leather it's it's exactly what I wanted then I'm sitting on my new couch at the store at Ashley Furniture and the salesman is getting the paperwork ready for us to sign the five thousand uh, dollar cost we're paying cash so there's no financing for us not 
and anyway so they're getting the paperwork ready and I'm thinking about teaching this lesson to you not you but the students at that semester my first semester and I was like dead gum I'm going to teach you that you need to think that everything is negotiable that you should you should be thinking about bargaining and negotiating on everything you spend because it's amazing when you ask when you just say mm, that's not good enough or you say is there anything you can do to make that a better deal just by asking and then being quiet in almost every situation there's a better deal there's something you don't know that they're not going to tell you unless you kind of push back because usually they want you as a customer they want to make the sale but they have some other things they can do to enhance the deal a little bit and all you have to do in many cases is ask and I didn't do any of that in this situation I did no research I did no I didn't ask I I just I didn't compare shop and there I am sitting there about to pay five grand for this furniture thinking man I'm gonna teach this lesson and I'm not very good at this because I didn't do it I didn't do anything that I'm gonna teach you to do so I thought okay then I started by going to the salesperson and I said hey is this the best you can do and he's like yeah this is it there's our prices are as low as they're gonna be it's and then I said my next question to the salesperson was if I go shopping around town will I find something similar to this for a lot less hoping he'd say oh no this is the best deal in the world because I wanted to buy it and I didn't want to wait but I definitely wanted to when I taught this class I wanted to have some integrity anyway so he's like no this is and he starts selling me on the benefits of Ashley furniture they're you know they're there to back up their service agreement if you have a problem we're gonna take care of it you know you we've got this stuff in stock so it's gonna be delivered in the morning tomorrow all of these benefits that he's giving me doesn't really make me feel like there's any uh, you know doesn't make me feel like I'm getting a good deal I'm just getting a good name a good company and that's that's fine that's important but it's not worth a thousand dollars on a five thousand dollar deal the quality of the furniture matters but the all that other stuff that professional salespeople want to sell you may or may not make a lot of difference depending on what it is you're buying so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking I got to I got to do a little research so I pulled out my iPhone it was an iPhone I don't know it wasn't this iPhone this is an awesome iPhone it's an iPhone 13 plus it's anyway I pulled out my iPhone and I just googled actually I took the model number and the manufacturer name and I put it in I did a Google search for the exact furniture that I was buying and I found the exact furniture that I was buying from another company instead of Ashley it was called Coleman and I think it was Coleman maybe Coleman's but it was a, an online only distributor of furniture so the deal was you buy it online and they had certain things like they had white glove delivery it was free Ashley was going to charge me two hundred and fifty dollars for delivery so that's two hundred fifty dollars saved if I bought it online from Coleman's I didn't have to pay sales tax because at the time if you bought something online you didn't have to pay sales tax so that was gonna save me over five hundred dollars I think it was five hundred dollars but it was you know it was hundreds of dollars for sales tax what else oh the warranty at Ashley you know I don't know about you but when I buy furniture it makes me feel good to buy that little warranty that if you puncture the furniture or you spill something on it or something damages it they will replace it it's usually not that expensive and sometimes with our grandkids things happen anyway so for that it was gonna cost I wanna say it was I wanna say it was five hundred dollars per piece but maybe it was two fifty per piece whatever it was at Ashley the difference was at Coleman's you paid that same price 
that you would pay for one piece of furniture and it was per order so that was going to save us over five hundred dollars i can't remember what the number was it was either 250 or 500 per piece we were buying three pieces so that saved us it was a third of what it would have been at ashley's so that was all pretty big savings the big drawback was it wasn't going to be delivered tomorrow they had free white glove delivery saved us money and they did a great job delivering it. I mean, they picked up the old junk furniture, took it away, and they they set it up. It was ready to go when they left. But the problem was you had to wait like a week. So is it worth waiting a week to save how much money? I didn't even tell you the difference in price. So at Ashley, I told you the price was five grand. At Coleman, it was 2,500. Not only was the price half at Coleman's what it was at Ashley but you saved you got free delivery you got you paid one price for the whole order so you got that little warranty thing if you puncture your furniture or damage it they will replace it so you got I got three pieces so I only had to pay one price I didn't have to pay sales tax I'm sitting there going oh my goodness <laughs> bargaining and negotiating is a good idea if you do it <laughs> and I almost didn't do it and I thought wow now I have a story to tell when I teach this at U of H in personal finance my point is what I want you to believe is that if you choose to practice a few basic skills related to bargaining and negotiating if you're willing to do that it will make a difference in your financial life. That's it. That's my point. That's what I'm trying to sell you on. That's the whole point of this week's lesson and lecture is to help you understand that it does matter. It will make a difference. Whether it's 10% or not, I can't say. But I can tell you this, in that one transaction when I bought that furniture, if you do the math, that was a more than a 10% saving. It was like a 40% saving when it was all said and done. I saved a lot of money. Now I didn't have my furniture the next day. And that's kind of what happens when you bargain and negotiate. Sometimes you have to give up one thing to get something else, but it's usually worth it. So I'm sitting in this, it's called an open range. It's a 42 foot it's year 2020, the, the RV that I'm sitting in right now at Stephen F. Austin State Park. I'm going to tell you a quick story about it because this really doesn't have much to do with bargaining and negotiating. It has to do with, well, it does have to do with negotiating, mostly with yourself. Like I had to, I had to do some negotiating with myself. So I, my wife is a volunteer park host at Stephen F. Austin State Park, and so am I. I have a job though. <laughs> this is kind of something I do because she wanted to do it and I'm, we've wanted to do it for a long time. She's retired, I'm not retired, so I had to figure out how to make that all work. But we started doing this in January. We already had an RV, a motorhome, but it wasn't big enough to live in. It certainly didn't have an office like this office. And so we made a decision that if we were going to do this long term, that I had to have an office, I had to have good internet, I had to be able to work out of this silly thing. And so I'm sitting in this new office. But here's how this place came to be. Two weeks ago there was an RV show in Houston and we went to the RV show. Have you ever gone to a car show, a gun show, an RV show, a toy show? You go to those shows and everybody has their best products and they're trying to sell them to you. And we go to the show almost every year because we like to camp, we like to look at new stuff, but we never buy anything new. But this year we knew that we needed, a, I knew that we needed one because I wasn't, it was not fun trying to live and work out of that motor home. It was just, it didn't have an office. And so we wanted a bigger, better RV that we could live in and work out of. And so we went to the RV show to see what was, you know, what the new models looked like. And we found one that was awesome. And my wife even said, that's the one. Well, that one was $120,000 walkout. 
and I didn't want we didn't want to spend that but we knew we were going to sell our old one and we you know we needed it it's like a new life chapter so we liked it and we thought okay we're gonna we don't get today we're not gonna buy it at the show but we're gonna think about it and then we walked down the aisle and we found another one almost identical except it had an outside kitchen and it was twenty thousand dollars less same huge beautiful RV and I'm like whoa we I'm glad we didn't you know commit to the first one but we weren't gonna buy one at the show because we made our we promised each other we wouldn't do that because we knew we'd see stuff we really liked and really wanted does that ever happen to you you, you know you want something so we told ourselves we're not gonna buy a new uh, RV at the RV show no matter how good it is but it was getting really good <laughs> Because we went from the one that we knew that would just be everything we needed to one that was just even better for twenty thousand dollars less, and then we went to down the hall a little. It's just a big room, and we went to the next one, and it was exactly the same model, the same brand, but it was twenty thousand dollars less than the one before it, and it, so it was it was eighty five thousand dollars can't remember if it was so 120,000 down to like a hundred thousand and then down to 85,000 it was called a Mesa Ridge by open range no by Highland Ridge I think is the maker but you can look it up Mesa Ridge 42 foot fifth wheel RV and they were selling it for eighty five thousand dollars at the RV show and we're like whoa it's better than the first one we looked at and it's a lot 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 less expensive but I told the salesman we're just not gonna buy at the show I was ready to buy my wife was feeling pressured because it was just such a good price and it was brand new and I'm like why not but I promised her we wouldn't buy one and she was like no no and so we almost got in a fight um, because I was pressuring her and she was feeling pressured and I just told the salesman, no, can't do it. And then he said, what if I knock $5,000 off? He called his boss and they said they'd knock $5,000. So now it's $80,000. I'm like, that is such a good deal. I wanted it. But I made a promise. We didn't buy it. We went home that night and my wife went online. She went to Craigslist and she found this one. It's a 2020. It's in really perfect almost perfect shape and it has everything that that Mesa Ridge had it's made by the same people and it was a lot less it was twenty thousand dollars so it was fifty eight thousand dollars we got it for which you know that's a lot of money but for what we needed we're gonna be able to sell our old one for more than that and my point is simply that we went to the show we found what we wanted it was 120 grand we ended up buying one for less than half of that because we were willing to negotiate with ourselves and say you know what if we wait if we keep looking if we if we buy used um, I'm not afraid of buying something used I fix stuff that's what I do so this and sitting where I'm sitting today telling you this story it's like I think we did an okay job bargaining and negotiating but mostly mostly what we had to do what I had to do was negotiate with myself and that's what you're going to have to do that's what bargaining and negotiating primarily starts with is you have to think about take some time not let your emotions drive your decisions because if you're anything like me when you want something you want it and that's what is the most expensive part of life in a culture of consumerism is we want stuff we may not need it but we want it and we want it now and credit gives us the ability to do that now we paid cash for this we didn't we didn't even, you know we pay cash for everything we have no debt and I hope that you decide that life is worth 
you know, going through life, putting off some decisions, some things that you want, and waiting and saving and spending, you know, buying it cash, you can negotiate a lot better deal on used things than you can on new things. But even on new things, if you're going to buy a new car, a new RV, there's a lot of ways you can negotiate and bargain for a better deal. Um, so th those are my two stories today about bargaining and negotiating. And I'm looking for you this week as you do your assignment to learn a few things about bargaining and negotiating. And I want to hear your story. I want to hear what things you're going to negotiate, what things you're going to make a bargain on. Now, at this point, usually in this lecture, I don't tell as many long stories. And I just, we make a list of things that you think we could bargain or negotiate. So let's take a minute and just, so if you, if you don't mind, just post in the comments, in the chat, what are some things you know you can negotiate? Some things you know that you can bargain. And while you're doing that, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, or in the, in the Zoom chat, while you're making your list of things that you can bargain and negotiate, uh, I'm looking at those things coming through. And what I'm interested in, and what I want you to be interested in, as you see the things that are being posted, that, yeah, I know I can negotiate that. I know I can make a bargain on that what happens is and when we do this together if we were all in the same room what you would notice is the people on this side of the room they have all of these things that can be negotiated <laughs> but everyone not everyone but a lot of people on this side on my left side your right side the people who started out saying I'm not comfortable it feels awkward I don't like it bargaining and negotiating is not something I really love doing those folks when they make their list it's got a very small number of things on the list and they're watching you make your list going no you can't negotiate that you can't bargain on that yet we all have stories story after story after story where we said wait that's not good enough can you do better we just took a few basic skills of negotiating and we made a bargain we made a deal we got them to lower their price and provide or provide a better service at the same price so many ways just because we took the time to ask we did a little research in fact let me just pull up my little list and we'll end with this and this is in your article I mean it's in your assignment rather um, and these are just these are just the things that over the years I've come up with number one is you can bargain and negotiate anything and everything that's just a general idea a general rule it's obviously not completely accurate there are some things that you can't negotiate but not very many things and if your mindset is I can bargain and negotiate anything I promise you you're gonna find a lot more things to make a bargain on versus someone whose mindset is I don't like doing it I don't want to do it and I'm not even gonna to try to do it and in the end that one principle that one mindset shift paradigm shift can make a huge difference in your financial life it really can so that's the whole point of today's lesson. And then number two, you got to exercise your walk away muscle. I talked about that at the RV show. You have to do that. It's not always easy because you want stuff. That's number two. And the practice the daily discipline of patience. You know, just waiting. It's, it's like the walk away muscle, but like the whole deal with the uh, furniture not being delivered for a week that, you know, I really wanted it the next day but that's part of bargaining and negotiating with yourself comparison shopping is another one it's it's really important I'm not very good at it. I don't like doing it It takes time it's tedious it requires patience um, I just want to get it done and maybe you do too but if you're patient and you're willing to do a little research it can make you a much much more proficient negotiator and bargainer you can find a better deal if you take time to do research so that's why it's on my list and 
Dave Ramsey loves this one. Cash is king. Uh, it used to be if you walked into a place to buy something and you've got cash money, th that made the deal easier to make. But honestly, I don't think cash is what it used to be. I think people know you're going to show up with a cashier's check or a credit or even a credit card. You have so what I say is is king is you have the purchasing power to buy now. If you have to go to their back room and get a loan and figure all that out, you lose a lot of power. So if you can show up with funding you have power. Cash is king. Used to be it was green stuff, but I say it's just purchasing power. Um, and silence is golden, so shut up. That's one of my favorites. You will be amazed when you get into a negotiation situation, whether it's for your salary or a used car or you're dealing with somebody buying an RV. Um, by the way, I did not negotiate with the people that I bought this RV from. I didn't even ask for a lower price because I knew it was a really good price. And maybe I should have, I probably could have got them to come down a little bit, I don't know, but after going through the process we went through at the RV show and knowing what we were getting, I felt very good, and I still do, about what we got. So sometimes bargaining and negotiating is just doing the research, knowing what you're looking for, and, you know, paying whatever that, the asking price is. That's not always true. It's usually not true. And maybe it wasn't true in this case. Maybe I could have gotten it lower, but they were really nice people and it was exactly what we were looking for. So that was that. I didn't do any negotiation. Timing is everything. So how can I explain this one? One way is uh, to explain timing relative to bargaining and negotiating. If you're buying a used car, or an RV or anything that sits on a lot at the end of the month at the end of the quarter at the end of the year that timing is really special because they really want to make a deal to get that inventory off their lot so if you come at the end of the month you have some additional bargaining power timing is really important uh, another thing is like if you're gonna buy a house or in this case RV I don't know if you know this but during COVID everybody wanted an RV so the producers the manufacturers they were all backed up and you had to order RVs and it took a while to be delivered and the prices were up 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 and they kept going up because of COVID because everybody wanted an RV they didn't want to be in a hotel they wanted an RV so many people bought RVs not what do you think is happening with the economy going through what it's going through with all of the RVs that were on the market recreational vehicles fifth wheels motorhomes you name it there's so many of them that the price is going down 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 so if you were to just wait and be patient you could find a much 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 better deal because of timing and that's true with a lot of things so those are my basic walkaways I wanted to share those with you but I want you to come up with your own I want you to come up with a list of the things you're gonna bargain and negotiate and uh, that's your assignment this week so I am going to jump over to the chat I don't see any questions we're out of time you guys are awesome I can't wait to read your articles about your bargaining and negotiating that assignment will be updated in a minute with your class collaboration but if you're here in zoom or you're watching on Facebook or YouTube you know the class collaboration for this week is going to be to tell me which side of the room you're on I love to bargain and negotiate or I feel awkward I don't really love it that's one and number two is what do you see as some distinctions differences between bargaining and negotiating just your ideas your your thoughts so good luck with this week's assignment. Next week we'll get together, and then the following week I believe is spring break. So we will uh, be back together next week, and then we'll take a week off. Thanks for being here. I uh, appreciate all you guys and the work you're doing in the course. Thank you very much. I'm going to go and end the, uh, if I can find the right button, I'm going to end the, I'm going to,